Namaste, dear friends. Namaste to all of you. Welcome to Namaste, our... dear friends. Namaste to all of you. Welcome. Welcome to our Vini Yoga Unplugged of March 2024. <clears throat> Today we will talk about <clears throat> Mudita appreciation and uh, let's begin with our invocatory chants. Oh. 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 Shoklam Baradharam Vishnum Shashivarna Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanan Jayet Sarva Vigno Pashantaye Yasya Dviradavakra Jaha Parishadya Parashatan Vignani Gnanti Satatam Vishwaksenan Tamashraye Nyananda Mayandevam Nirmalas Patika Kritim Adharam Sarva Vidyanam Hayagrevam Upasmahi Pundari Kasana Sinam Pandura Brindu Sannibham Akhanda Bodhajanakam Hayagrevam Upas Mahi Gorubhyas Tad Gorubhyas Cha Namo Vakamadhi Mahi Vrani Mahi Chatatradhyao Dampati Jagatampati Shri Nagaryam Mahapuryam Tamra Parnyuttare Tate Shri Tintrini Muladhamne Shatakopaya Mangalam <coughs> Nila Tungastana Giri Tate Sukta Mudbodhya Krishnam Parartyam swam shruti shata shira siddha madhya payanti. Swachishtayam srajani galitaya balat kritya kadhunti. Goda devi goda tasyai namahidam idam bhuya evas to bhuya ha. Jayatu Jayatu Natho Vanyayat Atva Pranita Jayatu Jayatu Yogi Yoga Gokya Pravakta Jayatu Jayatu Sakshat Tattva Darshi Maharshi Jayatu Jayatu Bhaktir Mula Kandam Munindraha Swadhayan nehasar vesham, Trayantartham sodur graham, Stotra ya masa yogindra, Tamande ya munakwayam. Yo nityamachutapadam buja yugma rukma. Vyamo hitas taditarani trina yamene Asmad guru bhagavatasya dayaka sindho 
ಪ್ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಶರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತಂತ್ರೋತ್ತಮ ಗುರುಕರುಣಾಪ್ತಚಕ್ರಂಕಾಶ್ಯ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಾಚಾರವಾಧ ವರದ ಪದ ಮುಖೇ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣೇ ನ್ಯಸ್ತಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಗೀಶಾತ್ತುರ್ಯ ಷಠ ರಿಪು ಯತಿರೇದಚೂಡಾರ್ಯಮೂರ್ತಿ ನೂತ್ನ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗನಾಥಂ ಕಲಿರಿಪುಮನಗಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತಂತ್ರ ಶಯಾಮ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನೂತನರಂಗನಾಥ ಯತಿರಾಜ್ ಆಪ್ತಾತ್ಮವಿಯಲ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನೂತನ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣಾರ್ಯ ಯತಿರಾಜ್ ಸಂಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ತುರ್ಯಾಶ್ರಮ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸೇಂದ್ರಕಟಾಕ್ಷಸಂತತಸುಧಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಾತ್ಮಯೋಗಾಶ್ಚಿತ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನೂತನವಾಗಧೀಶಯಮಿನ ಭಕ್ತ್ಯಾಶ್ರಯಾಮೋ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣವಾಗೀಶಯತೇಶ್ವರಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಸಂಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಚಕ್ರಾಂಕಣಭಾಷ್ಯಸಾರ ಶ್ರೀನೂತ್ನರಂಗೇಂದ್ರಯತೌ ಸಮರ್ಪಿತಸ್ವ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯಂಗುರುವರ್ಯಮೇಡೆ ವಿರೋಧೆ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕೆ ಮಾಸೆ ಶತತಾರಾಕೃತೋದಯ ಯೋಗಾಚಾರ್ಯಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯಮಹಂ ಭಜೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯಕಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯಸ್ಯನಾಥವಂಶ ಪ್ರದೀಪಕ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣಗುಣರೂಪಂತ ಶ್ರೀದೇಶಿಕನ್ನಮ್ಯ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ವಿನಿಯೋಗ ಪ್ರಚಾರಕ ವಿಶೇಷ ವೈದಿಕ ಸೂರಿ ತಂದೇಶಿಕ ಸ್ಮರಾಮ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಮ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮ ಹರಿ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತೇ Namaste, dear friends. Namaste to all of you. <clears throat> Welcome to our third <clears throat> meeting of our monthly <clears throat> um, Sangha, <clears throat> where we are sharing some key concepts of yoga. And today we are in the third meeting. And today's topic will be about Mudita, which is among the three bhavanas that maharishi patanjali is presenting that we integrate into our life so that our mind becomes much more uh, peaceful or much more calmer and <clears throat> this is something that we really need to um embody as part of the four attitudes and it's very closely related also with the buddhist concept of brahma viharas the same four 
bhavanas are presented by the Buddha, Buddha Buddhist teachings, where <clears throat> they call it Brahma Vihara. But as we in yoga, we call it as bhavanas, which means attitudes that we should inculcate, incorporate in our life. And among the four, we are today going to deal with the third one that is actually called as mudita. Mudita, <clears throat> in a simple way, actually, in some strange way, is connected with the word moda, which means to have a joy, to have appreciation or joy. <clears throat> and in a very simple way, the word mudita can be translated as appreciation. And I really want to start uh, by saying, I really am appreciating all of your presence here today in this uh, discussion. And this is what makes it more, uh, what do you call, satisfying that you are all showing up, even though you all have a busy schedules and lives, you always take the time. So I'm very, very appreciative of this. And this I am in moda, actually. I'm in a great uh, joy <clears throat> to see all of you here from so many parts of the world. And uh, it's very, very reassuring that we are on the right track, therefore. So the word mudita is defined very often as appreciation or a feeling of joy, uh, uh, especially in a non-attached uh, way, in a non-attached way. And uh, what Patanjali is saying is that we need to show this attitude, we need to embody this attitude, especially when <clears throat> some towards what is called punya vishaya, some noble actions. Normally, when normally when some person is doing a noble action, there are one of two things that we tend to do. <clears throat> there is one of two things we tend to do. On the one hand, we try to criticize them because we are a bit jealous that they are doing the good job and not us. So we try to criticize them <clears throat> saying, ah, you know what, they're just doing it because it's very easy for them. On the other side, we are also, if somebody is doing something good or they are sharing something about their good news or their good action, we want to steal their thunder. We want to share something. Oh, you know what? I did this. I did that. Sometimes I've been in relationship with people like this, not only in a partnership, but also in other situations where every time I share something, it's almost like a competition. They have to share something back. It's like if I if you say something, they have to say something back just to prove that they are also as good and they are also as great. That is not mudita. That is actually steya. You are stealing somebody else's spotlight. And this very often happens in relationship where two couple, in a couple, a person is sharing something good or bad about something that they are going through, difficulty or whatever. Immediately, it becomes like a competition. Oh, you know, this also happened. Oh, this also happened. It's like a, a new husband or wife comes back home and shares to the partner, oh, I got a promotion, something good happened. Instead of just keeping quiet and listening to it and saying, yeah, congratulations, I appreciate that. They're like, oh, even I got a kind of promotion. Even I got this. You know, you are almost not acknowledging. That's not mudita. That's actually steya. And very often this happens and this, if, if you are in a relationship with such kind of persons, please take some distance because it's not healthy. Mudita is exactly the opposite. Appreciating good things that are being done, whether by yourself or by others. Whether by yourself or by others. And when you appreciate that, I can tell you that the universe is watching it. And the appreciation will come back. 
And please do not ever confuse appreciation to the mundane and boring concept of politeness. You have to mean the appreciation. It's not just a stupid politeness thing that, oh, how are you doing? You're so wonderful. Hey, that's BS. That's absolutely a lie. And you must just bury it. I once again say, in the domain of spirituality, politeness has no place. Politeness is got no place in the field of spirituality. Kindness has a place, not politeness, not niceness. You should mean what you say when you appreciate somebody. It should come from your heart. You have to mean it. It should not come from your lips. It should come from your heart. And you have to appreciate the act. And the world will take notice and the universe will take notice and there will be a good karmic consequence of that. It will somehow or the other come back to you. It will somehow or the other come back to you in a very, very positive way. In a very, very positive way. <clears throat> and this is where we need to understand what is appreciation or how to show appreciation. And very often, this is where that politeness bullshitters say that politeness is always nice words. Actually, sometimes saying no words is actually a great way of appreciation. Sometimes listening is a way of appreciation. So let's look at some ways through which we can actually show the concept of appreciation to to some towards somebody which could include yourself as well. Now, the best way in my view, and this is my personal view, is always to write a note of appreciation. Use pen and paper, no, not type it, but to write a note of appreciation that's why I always have a, uh, uh, with me my set of pens and always, always a set of trading cards so that wherever I uh, have to appreciate, I can very quickly write a note of appreciation. The reason I say this is because when you write a note, your brain functions from another place than typing. Your brain and your feeling and your motor movements have to come together. It's almost like a meditation. So, and it aligns your heart, your body, and your mind and intention, everything together. And when you write this, you're also putting your energy into that card. And that's very sticky. And that person can have that note for a long time. When you send a WhatsApp message, I mean, today we get so many WhatsApp messages that in half an hour, that message is forgotten because it's already scrolled up somewhere and you have to keep searching and searching and searching. And some people <laughs> also, uh, you know, they have this thing called the disappearing messages. So, you know, after some time, the message automatically is disappearing. So you can't even remember. Whereas this card that you give, where you express, will stay for a long time. And it is not using your words. So you're not invading their space. They can read it at their own free time. They don't need to read it in your presence. It's not about your ego that you are appreciating somebody. It is about an appreciation of their act. So let them read in their time. It's not about, oh, read this in front of me, you know, read or so I'm so great, I am appreciating it. That's actually the opposite of mudita. So that's why lean, write a note and either leave it discreetly in some place where they will see it later or send it to them by old fashioned post. Keep the post offices running. It's a very, very good way to do that. So this is very, very one simple way. Do not just use words from your lips because when you write, your words are not coming from your lips. It's coming from your heart. 
It's a very big difference you find. So this is my personal view. You may agree or disagree. And if you agree, I appreciate your agreement. If you disagree, I couldn't care less. That's your problem. It's not mine. So that's the first thing. The second way, and this could in this could even be to yourself, write a note of appreciation to yourself. You know, that's also possible. And that's where sometimes you may not necessarily have to have a card, but you may need to have a notebook where you write with your pen and paper every time something good I do or something good that happens to me, I'm always writing it down, whether it's something that somebody does to me or some good thing that I feel I've done. I don't want to forget it because we tend to be very self-critical these days and sometimes it's good to also appreciate our positive thoughts. <laughs> and this is why I do not like the use of digital media to appreciate people like send online greeting card, online message that saying you are wonderful. It's useless. It's got some value, but not really such great value because you're not, you're taking the easy way. You're not taking the effort to write, to appreciate. When you write with pen and paper and go to a post office, you are taking an effort. And that is showing your appreciation. That is why write with pen and paper. The second way I would say is in the same way, if you are not so much of a writer, take an effort to buy a gift for them. And that gift need not be an expensive gift. It could be a simple flower that you pick from your garden, which may cost nothing in money. It costs in other ways through your effort. Or you could go and buy something that another person may appreciate or like. So this also shows your effort that you are taking to actually do that. Don't order it online to be delivered it on the <clears throat> whatever, you know, by the courier company or unless, you know, that's the only option uh, because you're not living in the same country or the same place. If you are in the same country, same place, take the effort. That would mean a lot. That would mean a lot because it shows that <clears throat> you are spending some time and pack it in a good way, present it in a good way. And, you know, <laughs> and sometimes you may, <clears throat> you may do uh, something in a nice way, but people don't realize it. It doesn't matter because it is what is important is you have shown your effort, how they receive it. That is not your problem. So, Give an offering that is appropriate and healthy. Don't buy stupid things like chocolate or, you know, cookies or things like that, which are unhealthy. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said, palam patram pushpam toyam. Buy, when you offer a gift, you give them fruits or leaves or water or things with milk you know, like milk products, like milk or cheese, because they are healthy. They are healthy. Don't buy sugar because that is not healthy. What is sweet short term, but suffering long term is not considered an appropriate gift. In the same, Bhagavad Gita is not telling you to buy a big piece of steak. Meat is not a healthy gift to give people. Oh, they like it. Who the hell cares if they like it? It's not healthy. So give something that is healthy. In our tradition, for example, when we would go to elders in, as part of the blessing or in certain auspicious days as part of the blessing, they would give a neem leaf, a bitter neem leaf with a mantra, Shatayur Vajradehaya Sarva Sampatkaraya Cha they would give a neem leaf, which is so bitter as a blessing because that is bitter for the moment, but long term it gives you health. That is actually appreciation. If you are giving them a box of chocolate, you are not appreciating them. You are actually wanting them to die with diabetes. So it's not really an appreciation. 
You want to give them a piece of meat. You want them to die with cholesterol. That's not appreciation. You know, so next time buy a box of bitter tea. That's better. When I say bitter tea, I don't mean the English tea. I mean the Chinese tea or the Japanese tea that is much more healthier. You know, it, buy something that is long-term value. This is the gift that we should give. Something that will elevate their health, elevate their country. Give some gift of a book that they could read. Give a gift of something that is spiritually useful for them, like maybe a candle or a lamp or something that they can use. Not some very uh, cheap ass materialistic thing that gives temporary sense of uh, pleasure. That is not really appreciation. That's actually depreciation. And this topic, if you are so skillful, which I have to confess I am not, if you can make something in your hand, give them something that you have made, like handmade, homemade thing. No, I really wish I was good in hand handmade things, but I don't really make so many handmade things. I cannot. So you can cook a meal for somebody or you can make some scarf for somebody or you can make uh, some art thing for somebody. And there are so many of you here who are such great uh, artists with your hands. If you can do something, and it can just be something very, very small. It can be something that is very, very small. Another way to do appreciation, and this is something which is so important, is do something together with them that they enjoy. Like if they enjoy going for a walk in the botanical garden, go with them for a walk. If they enjoy going for you know a hike in the mountain, go with them, spending time doing something that they like, not just what you like. And this is also very essential in relationship that both people do what the other one likes as well. That is what is true appreciation in relationship. Sometimes you see in relationship where one person is doing a lot for the other person, but the other person really doesn't care or does not even is interested in what the other their partner likes. You know, they don't even care or they don't even know. If they spend five days, six days, ten days, two months, three months, but they don't know anything about their partner. That's not fair or bad. That's not a way of showing appreciation. Do something together. This is also part of yoga, my dear friends doing something that the other person enjoys. Again, as long as it is healthy. If my friend or somebody says, well, I want to go get drunk in a bar. I don't think I want to go that. That is their business, not mine. You know, it's not really an appreciation, act of appreciation. Whereas if they say, well, I want to go to the mountain. Even if it's difficult for me to climb a mountain, I will put my effort to climb with them because it means so much for that person. And this is another way to do something that uh, which they enjoy. And another way in this topic of doing something they enjoy, which could also include doing something together with them that they don't enjoy. For example, cleaning their house. You want to give a helping hand. You know, like many young children, they don't like to do homework. Sit with them as a parent rather than shout and scream at them saying, you have to do homework, what the hell are you doing? Sit with them, appreciating them by sitting with them, spending time with them together so that you are doing also something that they don't enjoy, but they have to do. But they have to do. I don't like to do my taxes. I don't. But if somebody was supporting me when I was doing my taxes and saying, oh, come on, let's do it together. I'll help you. I will feel so appreciated because I'm not very good mathemat in mathematics and numbers and accounts and other things just freak me out. I just cannot manage all the numbers. It's just too many to see. And, you know, so if somebody was there with me and say, oh, come on, let me help you with the taxes. I would feel so much appreciated, even though I don't like doing that. 
So sometimes it's not only about doing what somebody likes. And this is particularly important in close relationships like partners or family members, brothers, sisters, like somebody may get sick and it's a difficult time for them. And when they are sick and they're going through some troubles in the hospital, they'll feel lonely. If you show up to bring them some soup or you know, even call them if you are not in the same country to support them from far, that's a very important way in which you show that you appreciate them. And they may have done some good things for you in the past, but you are showing some kindness and some appreciation by saying, hey, you know what? You're doing a good thing by going through this surgery because in the long term, this will help you. So I'm here to support you because you made a good decision. It's a good decision. It's a good decision. So rather than, you know, talk to them about your own problems, you know, sometimes, you know, you share your, your to your friend, oh, I have a medical problem and, you know, I just went to <laughs> and have my blood results gone and these are all the problems my doctor told me. And then your friend sends you, a message with their, their list of medical reports and their problems and saying, oh, me too, me too, me too. It's almost like a competition. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. That's not appreciation. There is a time for that later. Not in this moment. Another thing is, for example, if you have, if you have been on a, if you have been on a, a journey with somebody uh, which has been a good journey for you like a pilgrimage or a trip or travel you know making a souvenir album like a photo album or a picture album or things like that time you have spent together like somebody's birthday is coming making something like that is so much more meaningful than just buying a cake and you know clapping and because i for me all these people who buy a cake they're doing it for their bloody selfish reason because they want a slice of that cake. You know, they're not doing it because you want the cake because you cannot eat the whole cake. If you eat the whole cake, you will you will definitely get diabetes. But they want a slice. That's why they bring you the damn cake. It's very, very selfish. That's not appreciation. If they make a photo album and leave it with you, that's appreciation. In that same way, teaching somebody something teaching them a skill, teaching them something. That is a way of appreciating their intelligence, their existence, their value. So spending time to teach because teaching is not an easy profession. And this is so, something today, which is a lot of people want to be with somebody else only during happy times and pleasurable times. You know, why do you want to be with, uh, with somebody? Oh, they're so happy to be with them. And what about when they are not happy? You know, what about when they are not happy? That's not really a valuable relationship or a construct. So appreciation is, uh, in a way, also to deal with the ups and downs of life. So take some effort, make a photo album, for example, write a few things or a few words. And if people don't know how to receive that, then they are not really your friends. If they value more the cake you bring and rather than this, and there's something wrong with what they are doing. You know, this is something that you need to understand. And th th there are so many hidden languages in this and hidden layers about these kind of situations. Sometimes what people value is not really what we think they value, you know? Um, uh, I remember long, long ago, um, um, well, there was an Indian man and he was, uh, my father asked him to teach his first class uh, in our school and he taught the first class and, you know, uh, so uh, my father thought it would be very nice that, you know, he give the first salary to him by hand. So my father called him and he gave the first salary by hand, which was like 100 rupees in those days. I'm talking about 1980s or whatever. So the man did not deposit the money in the bank. He did not spend that money. He framed that 100 rupees and kept it on the wall. Because for him, that he got that from his teacher was more valuable than the value of that money. And sometimes that's what we need to understand is that what people will appreciate or what is 
what is worthy of being appreciated is not material things. You know, it's not material things. <laughs> and sometimes we are like that. Sometimes I, I often think uh, that the world is very strange because as I told you, I'm not very good in hands, but I do know how to do some little decorations or whatever. Sometimes if I'm giving a gift to somebody, I put this all in a very nice bag and I put some stickers on the bag, which which says very nice things about them, write something. And people just take the things and just throw the bag in the garbage. And I'm like, oh my God, my gift was the bag, not the things inside the bag. You know? <laughs> and people don't understand. That's reality. So you have to learn to do that. And all this you need to do for yourself as well. Whatever you do for others, you should do for yourself as well. And an important thing about the last way I would like to show uh, that we can show appreciation. And I, I feel this is one of the best ways, apart from writing the note, is to be silent and listen to somebody. And this is a skill that many of us need to learn. Because today you have this modern day uh, woke nonsense called freedom of expression, which people abuse to basically vomit verbal diarrhea on us or a verbal vomit on us and just keep speaking and speaking and speaking. Sometimes, especially when somebody is sharing something, just listening without giving an opinion, without even saying a word, that is a way of appreciating that you are actually appreciating what they are saying. Because they don't, and this is a very important thing, just because somebody is sharing something with you, it does not mean that they want your damn opinion. So learn to shut up and listen, because that is a form of appreciation. Just because I'm sharing something with somebody or with you about something that's going on in my life, it does not mean that I'm asking your opinion about it. If I need your opinion, I will explicitly ask because I'm, if I am intelligent enough to share what I'm feeling with you, I think I also have reasonable intelligence to ask you, what is your opinion? And if I'm not asking your opinion, it basically means I don't need your opinion. And the same with everybody else. So many people uh, share things with me. It does not mean I should assume that they want my opinion. That's why I often listen and I ask, do you want my opinion? And in some ways, it's a bit... Uh, <clears throat> A different for me because very often I'm in the role of a teacher and therefore I am I am kind of entitled to give an opinion but sometimes I find it very strange that some of my students think that I need their opinion just because I'm sharing something but that's not their role my students are not my opinion givers they don't need to give my opinion my and even my friends many of my close friends they know very well not to give me an opinion because <laughs> They know I'm very vocal in asking for help or opinion. I had difficulties before, but now I'm very, very open about it. And the same for you. you just, when you share something to somebody, it doesn't mean that you are giving them the right for their opinion. Their appreciation is by listening to you. And the same way, your appreciation of somebody sharing something especially something very deep and personal when they're sharing about their personal things, their life or things like that, difficult times they're going through, very moving times they're going through. It basically means they are sharing something very private and intimate, something that is valuable to them. Just learn to listen to it. It's like a jewel. You know, when you go to a jewelry shop, when they offer you a jewel, like a big 24 carat diamond or whatever, you can't be like playing with it and just break it because if you break it, you pay for it, right? It's your responsibility. So they won't even give it to you. They'll put it on a nice tray 
in front of you so you can watch, you cannot touch. So it's very precious. You just learn to appreciate it by looking at it. You're not going to grab it and, you know, oh, it's like that. It's like, oh, this way is better. That way is better. That's not your business. You just look at it from a distance. The same way when people are sharing something to you, that good thing that they have done. Sometimes people are sharing in a very humble way something good they have done. In a very, Some people will not, especially in a spiritual path, they will very rarely talk about their successes, the good things they are doing. So you should definitely, definitely learn to appreciate it by staying silent and receiving it, witnessing it, observing it, rather than give your view that has not been asked. Because then you are devaluing your own words. You're not appreciating your words. This is another important thing. This is another very, very important way through which we can appreciate. And of course, the last one, which I, I should say, even though it's not necessarily my favorite because people now just do it out of politeness and not meaning them, is actually compliment them, acknowledge them, show your gratitude, but from your heart. Not just like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, 400 times. If you See, it's a very simple law of supply and demand. When the supply is very high, the value is very low. When the supply is low, the value is very high. So if you use words to thank somebody too much for everything, give salt, thank you, give water, thank you, give bread, thank you, give wine, thank you, give this, thank you, give that, thank you, the value of your thank you is zero. Just receive it and toward the end of the day, say one big thank you from your heart. That's enough. That's enough. It's important. That's enough. So today, for example, in the morning, I mean, I got so lucky. I, I, I met a monk, a Buddhist monk today, a very senior monk. He's the, the most important head of the temp one of the temples here in Singapore. And through one of my friends, I was <clears throat> introduced to this monk today. And the monk spent one hour of his time sharing so many beautiful uh, moments and things like that with me, talking to me and asking me questions and also sharing so many things. And I could have thanked him for every one of the things. He gave me tea, he gave me this, he gave me that, blah, blah, blah. Every one of the things. It's pointless. So toward the end, finally... You know, I get up, I offer him a great namaste to him and say thank you. And that's enough. The value of that gratitude will be much more if it is said once, but it comes from your heart, rather than many times that comes from your lips. And that's why I don't like parents and others just teaching their children to say thank you for every damn thing. It's useless. It's useless. And don't waste your words by saying this, because if you say so many times, it loses its value. And when you are offering something of an appreciation, that should not be lost in its value. It should be valued by the receiver as much as you are valuing it. If not more. If not more. It must be valued very, very seriously. But Definitely, you need to offer gratitude. You need to offer that kind of acknowledgement of thank you or gratitude when you are receiving something special, when somebody is doing something good. Punya Vishaya, when somebody is doing something good, show gratitude to them, show appreciation for them, but do not lose its value in a way that it does not lose its value. If you have to be very, very clear because the world is now so strange. We are entering a Vata era where so many people are very, very easily 
sending messages, receiving messages, blah, blah, blah. And you can't, you don't even have to say thank you anymore. You don't even have to type it. There's already a sticker. You just choose the sticker. That's it. There's no effort. And then people put 20 stickers of thank you, actually trying to show that they are so grateful, but it's useless because it's a bloody sticker. Write one small note. Thank you. Go to the post office and then do that. That's better. That's better value. That's more old school, but more spiritual because writing has a spirit that electronics do not have. This is one of the reasons why none of my books are electronically available. I don't want people to use my books electronically. I hate it. I prefer the books to have, you know, paper and pen so that when something is written there, there is something. I have my books here, which I used as textbooks. And my father has written some words of appreciation in that. That's of great value to me. My teacher has written some words for me. How can the teacher write it electronically? Oh, they sign it digitally. Oh, there's no, no value. So take time for appreciating things because appreciation is about energy. The energy of appreciation must be felt. The energy of appreciation must be felt. And we are all, all, and do not think that you have only bad things going on. Small good things are going on in our life. Start appreciating that. Don't expect big things to happen for you to feel happy. Start, many, many people ask me, why this bad thing is happening to me? No, that's the wrong question. The right question is, what can I learn from that? How can I improve my life? What small thing I can do to improve my life? That is a much, much better way of looking and asking the right question rather than asking the wrong question, why this bad thing is happening to me? So this is something we have to learn. We have to learn that sometimes we don't need many, many big things. Have to happen for us to feel happy. It's impossible that we wait for that. We need to start appreciating small good things like a flower may blossom in your garden. Learn to appreciate that. That means that the universe has done a good thing for you. A dog may come and say hello to you. You take a moment to appreciate that instead of just kicking it away. The rainbow may show up. Look at look up in the sky. The sun shines for you every day. Look up at the sun for 30 seconds or less. Say thank you so much for being there because without that we won't be there. So those are the small things that we need to start appreciating. You know, it's very, very fascinating because <laughs> today when we met, when I met the monk, it's so interesting because him and I, we, we rarely talked about philosophy. We talked about so many normal things in life. And for any normal outsider who is so-called in the spiritual field, that would have looked so strange because there are two teachers here meeting, but they are not talking about philosophy at all. That's the beauty of it. If you talk about life, the way you talk about your life shows how much you've integrated the philosophy in your life. But if you talk about philosophy, it means you're only talking about it. You're not living it. And that's where we have to start appreciating small things in life. And this is very, very important. So don't wait for big things to happen, my dear friend. Small, good things always happen. You may be losing $100,000 in the stock market. That's okay. But maybe somebody just offered you a smile. Appreciate that you will feel better. Appreciate a flower for a few seconds. You will feel better. Because life is full of ups and downs. Everything is not going to work perfectly the way we want it to work. 
if it was, then life would be very, very boring. So when things are going up, save some good things so that when things go down, you are not collapsing. And learn to appreciate even small things. This is where mudita is so important because small good things are always happening to us. Small good things are always happening to us. <clears throat> and the universe will reward you in one way or the other. It will always reward you. It will always reward you. And small thing could just be as simple as a smile to somebody you don't know. That's it. So this, my dear friends, is my uh, very strong opinions about Mudita. And I really appreciate that you are all here today. And I appreciate that this is series is continuing. And next month, we will meet again in April for the next Bhavana Upeksha, a very important one. We'll conclude with a small chant and then we will close. Oh. Tachayo Ravrani Mahi Gata Yagnaya Gata Yagya Pataye Daive Swastiras Tunaha Swastir Manu Shibhyaha Or Dhanjig Hatu Besha Jam Shanno Astodvipade Shanchatoshpade Oh Oh Shanta 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 Namaste, friends. Take care.